Okay, so welcome back. Now this time we are going to apply our concept of spring in this condition or situation where we have a block of M with mass M, to be exact, is being pushed to the left to where the spring is compressed. Okay, so the original length of the spring is L sub naught or the free length is L sub naught and now the compressed spring is L. If the free spring is equivalent to twice, twice the compressed length, let us solve for the following. What is the force, okay, what is the force if the plane is frictionless? What do you think is the amount of force being pushed right here, frictionless? So you're not going to remove the force. Now, if force, if F, Okay, so second one, letter B, is we have to figure out F if we have to consider friction. So this is not frictionless. This time there will be friction. Now letter C, okay, the coefficient of friction at the instance the applied force is released. Okay, so for example, it's compressed, let go of it, and then it's about to move. So at the instant that it's going to move, before it starts moving, okay, before it starts moving, what is the coefficient of friction? So that's for letter C. So here we will be applying a concept of free body diagram and other um, other concepts that we have learned from uh, our lesson on Newton's law of motion. So first thing I'm going to do is to draw an imaginary x and y coordinates right here that I would say that all of the forces will be acting on that dot. First step, free body diagram, FBD. So our free body diagram is a dot. So what I'm gonna do, this is for letter A. Okay, so for letter A, condition A. So free body diagram for condition A. So you have this force right here that we are applying applying it to the left and then the spring because of the inherent property of spring that it will push back that is fs now i almost forgot about the most important thing that always exists on this planet and that is force of gravity so we have this force of gravity and as well as we have the normal force, which is going up against force of gravity because the block is on a surface, a horizontal surface. So this is our normal force. So normal force. So Fn, Fg. And for letter A, let's take a look at this one. If you have the force, you have the force right here. We all know that this condition, there is no change in terms of the state of motion. Okay, so acceleration. So for question A and B, for A and B, we all know that the acceleration along y-axis will not change or the, uh, the uh, change, the state in motion is, is uh, zero, so there's it's going to be the same. And then x along x-axis, you are not going to let go of the force. You will still maintain the same amount of force for letter A and B. So there's no acceleration yet. Okay. So there's no acceleration. For letter C, the question here is for letter C, what will be the acceleration along letter C? So we have A and B and then letter C. We might need another sheet of paper for us to solve this. That's fine. As long as we establish all the needed information first. For letter C, it says at the instant. So it doesn't say right after. So it's at the instant. So at the instance, it's released. The acceleration along Y, of course, that's given that it's not going to move. It's not going to change. Uh, motion along the y-axis it's going to change along the x-axis but in our case at the instance okay you just let go of it so it says it doesn't say so t equals zero 
So at least I'm not at the very moment you just let go of it. it still haven't moved yet. So you still have the same velocity. So having the same velocity that is zero. So at this point, it's not moving yet. Okay, so it's not moving at all. So it's not moving at all. Now, let's solve for the force of uh, the applied force. So let's express our answer in terms of information that is provided. So if you notice, there's no friction. Okay, so there's no friction yet. So there's no friction. Now let me just use this. Okay, so let me use the blue ink. So if I will add my summation of forces along the y-axis, knowing that my acceleration is zero. So if you still want to place this one, which is y. Now forces along the y-axis positive going up, so that's F sub n, which is our normal force, minus the force of gravity is equivalent to mass times zero. So Fn is simply equivalent to Fg, and in our case, Fn is simply mass times g. There we go, that's for letter A. Now, let's take a look at the summation of forces or analyze forces along the x-axis. So forces going to the right is positive which is your force of spring minus to the left, which is your force, applied force, equals mass times zero. Okay, so there's no other forces, so we can say that force from the previous uh, uh, video, so force is equivalent to the force of spring. So force of spring, force of spring, force of spring, force of spring. Okay, so force of spring. So they are the same. So what is your F? Okay, so what is your F? What is the F? Now, we all know that force of spring is as follows. Negative K times X. So this is your force of spring. Okay, so now we can just plug it in over here. Okay, so we can plug it in right here. So F is simply negative. Oh, okay. So we all know it's negative. But what happens over here is that your L is greater than uh, L naught. So what will happen is that we will... Um, we will have a negative value, so the negative sign will just cancel out. But you know, we want to see it, so let's go ahead and and uh, prove it. Whoa! In this problem, I forgot the given. So k. So k is also given. Okay, so k is provided. So what is your k? Okay, so in some of the problems, you will be asked to solve for k. And maybe the next video you will experience that. So summation of forces, or, or K, and our X is simply L minus L naught. But we all know that L naught okay, is greater than, two, than L. So what we have here is negative K. And this is L minus 2L. So that will give us negative L positive. So negative times negative is positive. So your force is simply equivalent to K times L. So this is for our... So this is for our uh, letter A. So we were able to solve for letter A. It's simply equivalent to whatever K we have, okay? Whatever the um, spring constant is, and then you multiply it by the displacement X, which is L. 
Okay, so for letter B, okay, letter B, you will have the same free body diagram. For letter B, this time we just have to add the friction. So solution for letter B. So for letter B, let's have a free body diagram, a new one. This time we have to indicate friction. So this is Fg. This is Fn, which is our normal force. Spring force. Okay, so spring force somewhere here. Fs. And then, of course, we were pushing it to the right. So this is our force and then there is a small amount of friction that is going against it so force of friction okay so force of friction okay so as we were pushing it there is force of friction it encountered so there's force of friction okay now let's consider this force of friction now if you analyze our solution for y did not change with letter B. So we can always say that for letter B, the normal force is simply mass times G. So it is the same procedure, okay? So same procedure, let's apply it and it's the same. Now, let us analyze the forces along the x-axis, which is MAx. So forces to the right is positive, to the left is negative. So force of spring plus the force of friction minus the applied force equals mass times zero. Likewise, we have F of spring. So we want to solve for F Okay, so let's bring, bring this one to the other side of the equation because that's m times zero or mass times zero. It's zero because that's acceleration. So we have force of spring plus force of friction. There we go. Now, we all know from the other equation that, or from the other um, part of the question that spring force is negative kx. Okay, negative kx and if you just plug in those values you will have kl now you want to see it again let's do it so that is negative kx plus what is force of friction we've been doing it for the longest time and it's not moving so that's coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force but we know that normal force is m times g so we'll plug it in in a few so we'll see our solution and that is negative negative so negative so we all know that that is l minus 2l just like what we did here plus mu s m times g negative cancels out so now it's going to turn into positive and don't forget about the k Okay, so I almost missed the K. So we have F is simply K times L plus the coefficient of static friction multiplied by mass and G. So this will be the difference between A and B, and that is to include the coefficient of friction. So the spring force plus the coefficient of friction because it's pending motion or the motion is going to be against the push that we apply now for letter c so letter c so what i'm going to do is to get another sheet of paper is to take another sheet of paper Take another sheet of paper right here 
and use it to solve for letter C. Okay, so for letter C, let's use the green pin. So let's solve for letter C. See? Now let's put our dot. First thing that we have is our force of gravity. We have the normal force, which is equivalent to the length or magnitude. Now we have our Fs, which is our spring force. And it's about to move. It's about to move. At the instance, your F is released. So we remove the S. We remove the F or the force applied. And now, all we have is your F of friction. If you notice, the force of friction, it's about to move. Okay, So it's about to move. But at that moment, at the instance that the force is removed, everything will be equivalent to force of friction. So the applied force, so the force of friction increases. So everything will be the force of friction to prevent it from moving. Okay, so that's the amount of force that you need to overcome in order to start to move. Okay. Now, if we look at step A, let's look at section B. There's no changes in terms of the Y axis or the vertical axis. So all we can say is to just keep the same condition that the normal force is equivalent to the mass multiplied by the force of gravity or gravitational field strength or acceleration due to gravity or acceleration due to gravity. Let's go further. Now let's analyze the, the forces along the x-axis at this condition where even though it's going to start to move, the acceleration is still zero. Okay, so it's still zero. So let's move on. We have forces to the right positive, which is our spring force, minus force of friction equals mass times a zero. Okay, so mass equals zero, um, times zero. Now we have zero over here. Force of friction, uh, force of spring, which is Fs minus force of friction. Okay, so force of friction. So now I want my force of friction to be on the left side of the equation because I, I need it to solve for the coefficient of friction. So this is your force of spring. So now I equate them that they're equal, about to move. Okay, about to move, guys, about to move. Now, force of friction. So force of friction is simply our coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force, and that is your spring force. And spring force is negative k times x. Now, we all know that normal force is m and g, and then our x is simply L minus 2L. And then the negative cancels out. So we have our mu, which is K times L divided by the mass and the acceleration due to gravity or the gravitational field strength. So this will be our solution so for letter c okay so solution for letter c now what if okay, so for letter d what if what if okay so what if the um for letter d so let's okay, let's add letter d what if our block is already released and it's already one and a half of L. Okay, 
So it means like one half before it reaches L sub naught. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Okay, so let me just draw a rough draft right here. Okay, so now let's say I have my spring right here, two, three, four. Okay, and then I still have the same thing. So it's just a draft. Okay, so it's a draft, same M. Now this time, the distance is already, so L, okay, so L is not, is not L anymore, where it's compressed. Now it started, now it's moving to the right. It's moving to the right, okay. It's moving to the right. And our L is, let's say, um, let's say it's 0.5 of L sub naught. Okay. Mm, no, 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 no. It's going to be one point. Why did I say 0.5? Okay. Okay, so what if it is 0.75 of L sub naught? Okay, so 0.75 of L sub naught. Okay, 0.75 of L sub naught. So it means it's already moving, so you have an acceleration along the x axis. Okay, so you have the acceleration along x axis, and let's consider friction also. So now we still have friction. So let's start with our free body diagram. Normal force, force of gravity, and then we have the spring force, and then we have the coif we have friction force right here. Friction force. Friction force. So what will be the coefficient of kinetic friction? So let's figure out the K, the mu of K. Mu of K. Or maybe you want to figure out the acceleration. Why don't we figure out acceleration? So let's solve for acceleration also along the x-axis. So this is one thing that we want to solve. All right. Now, by looking at the same condition, the normal force is still going to be the same. Okay. That is our mg, as indicated here, as indicated over here, and indicated right here. So normal force is mass times g. Now let's analyze the different forces acting along the x-axis, mass times a, x. But this time our a is not zero. We have to solve for it. Okay, so let's analyze it. So what are the different forces? The same thing. Force of spring minus force of friction equals mass times the acceleration. So the acceleration is simply Fs minus F of F over M. Now we just need to figure out the values of Fs and coefficient of friction, or friction itself. Now, let's move on. And what is our acceleration? So now we have negative k. So here we go. So negative k multiplied by So 0.75 L sub naught minus L sub naught. So it's still positive. Okay. So L is greater than L sub naught. So we'll still have positive. Plus or minus force of friction, which is mu. This time since it's moving, so it's supposed to be the kinetic friction multiplied by mass and then g. So that will be divided by m. 
Okay, so let's just clean it up and organize it. You have positive k. And this will give us 0.25L minus mu k mg over m. So this will be our solution for acceleration. Just in case. Oops. I did miss to move my picture or my screen or my video. So there you go. So we have it here. Now, in case you want to solve for mu k, okay, starting with this, okay, using this one, okay, so using this to solve for mu k, let's use this space to write our solution. Now, all we have to do is multiply m by a. So mass times A, so cross multiply. Now I have 0.25 KL minus mu K M times G. Okay, so M times G. Now that we have the friction, the coefficient of friction is negative. All right, so let's move this to the other side. So this will give us negative 0.25 KL plus M sub A equals negative mu K M of G. Now, I don't want my negative to be there. So let's, let's have this one, mu K. Multiply both side by negative, and I want my mu k or my coefficient of kinetic friction on the left side of the equation. Just to organize it, negative times negative, so that is positive 0.25 k times l minus mass acceleration. So now we can say that our mu k or the coefficient of kinetic friction is simply equivalent to 0.25. KL minus MA over M of G. So this will be our kinetic, our coefficient of kinetic friction shown. So we have multiple problems solved already. Okay, using this example, using this example, but the priority is for us to answer A, B, and C, but just in case you were asked to solve for uh, an additional information, so there you go. We'll be working on another example in the next video.